Niacin is vitamin B3, and it's also sometimes referred to as nicotinic acid. Supplementally, you'll sometimes see it as niacinamide. So these are basically, niacin and nicotinic acid are pretty much the same thing. Niacinamide is really what's oftentimes referred to as a no-flush niacin. And one of the reasons why is if you've ever taken niacin, one of the things niacin does is it increases blood flow, but particularly to the skin. And so the niacin flush happens when you get, you know, upwards of 250 plus milligrams per dose of, is, of niacin, it can cause your, your body to start to flush. And the way, what happens is that flush, it starts, to, it starts in the crown of your head. So, you know, imagine your head here. It starts kind of right here and it kind of drapes down the head. Okay, and it, and it kind of sends tingling and it'll turn your face really super red. It'll almost look like you're having a reaction in the face, almost like a hive outbreak. Some people look at it and they think, oh my gosh, I'm allergic. Um, but what happens is it pushes through from your from base of your head down through your face, then into your shoulders, chest, and it just kind of moves its way down through the body, creating, for, for the most part, a, a very redness in the skin. It can create an itchy-like sensation. It can also create almost like a tingling sensation. I, when I do a niacin flush, and, and I, I like to do them, uh, I like to do them periodically, actually. Um, you know, different people have different responses, but to me, they, they, they actually just warm the body. It feels like almost like a hot flush for many people. So a lot of people don't like that flush. They're uncomfortable with it, mainly because they've never experienced it or because they don't like to be hot or because it freaks them out because somebody's looking at them and their face is beat red and they think, oh, are you okay? Do you need to call the, call the doctor? Um, so if you're going to do a niacin at higher doses, again, you get into that range of 250 plus. If you're going to do that, do it at home. Best time to do it is at home and not do it and then go to the grocery store or hang out with family members because they have a tendency to freak out on you if you're doing a flush. My wife used to, used to yell at me, she said, don't do that during the day. People are going to think there's something wrong with you. Anyway, that's in, in a gist, that's the niacin flush. So there's a, there's a form of niacin called niacinamide, which is a supplemental form of niacin that you can take, and it doesn't deliver that flushing reaction. Uh, it's not as effective, though, either, so that's the drawback. So if you use pure niacin or nicotinic acid, it's very effective depending on what you're trying to do with it versus the niacinamide, the no-flush version. So again, for effectiveness, this is your best form. For not flushing, this is your best form, so just depending on, on who you are. Now, what does niacin do? Aside from making your skin potentially uncomfortable and flush, what is it that, that niacin is actually important to do? So there are a number of different functions that niacin has. Niacin's a B vitamin. So if you recall, we've talked about a number of B vitamins on the show. Um, in biochemistry, if you have an old biochemistry textbook, maybe you took biology in school, there's this term in most biochemistry, well, in all biochemistry textbooks called NAD. That stands for nicotine adenine dinucleotide. We won't get into you having to memorize that, but NAD for short, or NAD, is niacin. It's vitamin B3. They just don't teach you that in biochemistry class. Remember when we were talking about vitamin B2, I said FAD is vitamin B2, and they just didn't teach you that, right? So my point is... Um, this is a very crucial element in biochemistry because NAD is primarily designed to help you create energy, right? And how does it do that? This NAD is what helps you break down carbs, fats, and protein and then convert those into ATP. ATP is what your body uses as energy. So this is, in essence, for all intents and purposes, this is energy that your body produces. But it's very difficult to get to that energy, to get to this point if you don't have NAD or niacin because it's very hard for your body to break down, molecularly break down carbs, fats, and proteins. So you have to have niacin to do that. So again, it creates 
energy. Now, niacin also protects and repairs DNA. There's a mechanism that, um, that we know about. As, as a matter of fact, let me, I think I have a, a nice diagram. I'll just pull it in and show you. Here we go. Let's move you out of the way. So if you see, look at this diagram here. This is, so most of you've heard of glutathione before. Um, glutathione is the master antioxidant, right? So if we're really talking about glutathione here, and most of you have heard of glutathione, um, and you've done something, something supplemental, right? So like, for example, a lot of people will take supplemental glutathione or will take N-acetylcysteine or NAC because it's helpful for, to help your body produce glutathione. And glutathione obviously is glutathione, but um, NAC helps your body to produce glutathione. But glutathione is a lot like your cell phone battery. It has to be charged, okay? It has to be recharged, if you will. So once you burn through it, once glutathione is used up to protect you as an antioxidant, again, then what has to happen is, is, is that, that glutathione is used up in this process where it becomes oxidized, okay? And it has to be regenerated. So it has to, you know, it has to basically do full circle and come back to here where it's functional. And in order to do that, you see this right here, what I showed you a minute ago, this is very common in biochemistry textbooks is they don't say vitamin B3, right? They don't say vitamin B3. They write out NADP, in this case, nicotine adenine dinucleotide uh, um, with a phosphorus group attached to it. Um, and anyway, so my point is, if when you see that NAD like that, this is actually niacin. They just don't talk about it. Whereas you can see riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, also in the middle here, is also required for glutathione. But is this is why B vitamins work together. They work tandemly together. So you've got vitamin B2 and vitamin B3 both responsible for helping to regenerate the master antioxidant that your body uses to basically defend degradation of DNA, RNA, and just generally your cells. Okay, so it helps to defend the functionality and protect your cells. And so that's what we're talking about back here. Okay, when we come back over here and say it protects and repairs DNA, it does so through that mechanism, through helping to regenerate glutathione, but also through the production of, of the antioxidant capacity of your cells. So very, very important. And by that same token, it's also known to help stimulate, let's change my color back, to help stimulate the immune cells properly. So niacin is important also for your immune system to, to work appropriately. And so this is why we don't want niacin deficiency, right? Just, just these three functions alone are very, very critical. And then we come over here, healthy skin. There's a disease where niacin causes inflammation of the skin, otherwise known as dermatitis. So if you've ever been diagnosed with dermatitis, um, niacin classically, it doesn't, but it always doesn't present classically, but very commonly severe niacin deficiency, also known as pellagra can cause dermatitis and this dermatitis a lot of times it looks like like a hands on the hands and feet like gloves and socks because it has a, a oftentimes has a line of delineation where the inflammation ends so from it's like you're wearing mittens of inflammation and you're wearing socks of inflammation that's kind of the classic presentation of really late stage dermatitis caused by niacin deficiency but um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't always manifest that way. Sometimes that inflammation's on the neck, on the chest, on the face, on the arms. Sometimes it, it, you know, again, it doesn't always appear the way you might read about it in the textbook. So, and I've seen a number of cases where it, it didn't at all appear in that way. So healthy skin, you know, niacin deficiency is notorious for contributing to skin inflammation. Also a healthy GI tract. So this is one of those that's commonly left out when we're talking about things like celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. There's a trap that, that oftentimes people get into. So that what is that trap? That trap is you've got... Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.